now another question okay another example so i have 10 people who reach simultaneously at a museum and uh, you know the museum allows passes so they all came with passes okay so you can use the pass to visit uh, regularly maybe in once in you know uh, in a month you want to go a couple of times you can use the pass to go so one day in the morning like you know when the museum opens 10 people stand in the uh, front of the museum and then uh, you know they they all reached at the same time okay so basically when they wanted to enter so the, the the ticket checker said that okay i mean i cannot put everybody together i want to check parcel so please form a queue right so stand in a line and then uh, come inside right now since all of them came together you know they they can queue in any way they want right you know if if some person reached first then you know, we can say that okay because he reached first he stands in the front but now here everybody came together so you know any order they are going to stand is not going to make a difference so the question is that how many different ways this uh, queuing can be done so how will you uh, count this right now <clears throat> If you if you look at this question, there is uh, see so we can say that okay. Let us look at the uh, like let us look at the first person who is going to be in the line, right? The first person going to be in the line can be any of the ten persons, right? So I can choose the first person who is going to stand in any of the ten possible ways, but now. When I look at the second person who is going to stand in the line, that is going to depend on who was in the first, right? The choice of the person who is going to stand second is going to be dependent on the who, who, who was standing in the first position, right? Because if, uh, you know, so A, B, C, D, etc. are the people, if A is standing in the first position, then A cannot stand in the second position, right? But if B was standing in the first position, right, out of this 10, we choose B to be in the first position, then B cannot stand in the second position, so it can be only any of the other guys, right? So, the choices themselves are not independent, right? But the number of choices, on the other hand, one can show that it is independent. So, the, the, so the framing of the uh the rule product rule is careful right so it says that if the number of choices of each separate decision is independent of previously made decision so the choices themselves need not be independent right so that is important right so the first in line uh we have 10 possible choices for that guy or that person right that girl so whoever arranged there one of these 10 persons must stand in the queue. But once a person is decided, the second position can be filled with any of the nine possible remaining guys. Even though who is going to stand there is dependent on the first choice, the number of persons who is going to stand there does not depend on this choice. So therefore, I can clearly say there are nine possible other guys standing for the second position. Then I can choose the third guy in eight possible ways etc the last guy is going to be only one guy right he is going to stand in the 10th position so <clears throat> we already said that even though the choices are not independent the number of choices at each stage were independent so therefore i can now take the product so i can multiply 10 into 9 into 8 into etc into 1 right so therefore the total number of uh, ways to form Q is 10 into 9 into etc. 2 into 1. Right? This particular number has so much applications and it comes in so many places in any of the counting questions that uh, uh, it has a special name it's called factorial you might already have seen this right uh, 
and uh, it is denoted by 10 factorial in this case or n factorial if you are looking at n in general so this uh, this particular symbol exclamation mark so this uh, is the you uh, know uh, this is how we why is it not coming this is how we denote okay so <clears throat> fine now another example okay so i'm looking at too many examples maybe but uh, these examples are also uh, telling some other uh, questions that come you know some parameters that comes uh, very often so that might be also useful so let uh, s be a set which has n elements okay now a k, k permutation of uh, the set s are the ordered k element subsets of s okay so i can i can just uh, take the k element subsets of the set and then order them right so uh, we start with a set take some number of elements from them put some in any order that i want now the question is that how many k permutations of s are there now how do you count this well from the previous uh, uh, question that we looked we might have a good idea about it right so <clears throat> i start with a set s which has exactly n elements now i want to form a k permutation means that i need to order this k elements in uh, you know whichever k elements i am going to have uh, in in a particular manner right so i i fix let us say k positions and then say that okay the first position i am going to choose right so 1 2 3 etc k right now first position i want to fill up with uh, some element right so i can choose one of the elements there are how many choices there are n possibilities right n possibilities for the first position because any of the n elements can be selected here but then the second position the first person whoever i choose cannot be there so therefore the remaining n minus guys one of them can be chosen here then n minus 2 and then up to n minus a plus 1 right So, if there are uh, k element subset that we are forming, not subset like you know permutation that we are forming, then we can choose n by person for the first position, n minus one for the second, etc., n minus k plus one, and each of these choices are independent. So therefore, it is n into n minus one into etc., n minus k plus one, right? <coughs> Yeah, so this particular thing has a, a special notation. Uh, this is uh, denoted by this n uh, within brackets and then uh, you know k outside, right? As a subscript. So uh, this is something. Yeah, something you uh, a, a notation that will come again, and we, it it is also denoted uh, sometimes as npk. Uh, or p of n comma k so all these uh, notations uh, are used but uh, we will stick with uh, one of them as far as we can but sometimes you know many textbooks follow many different notations and sometimes we might just use one of these anyway it's better to be familiar with this so this is uh, uh, the number of permutations k permutations of a set now if uh, k is equal to n right so we are looking at n n minus 1 n minus 2 etc n minus k plus 1 now when k is equal to 1 you can see that this immediately reduces to n factorial right this is what we get right so uh, and it also makes sense because we are talking about k permutations now what we looked at earlier was basically an n permutation of the n set right because we are looking at all possible arrangements this is precisely what we looked at in the previous question where we're looking at the number of ways to queue up the 10 people right 
So the 10 factorial came because they were all the permutations of the people, right? They are, we were arranging them in a linear order. So the linear arrangements of these objects can also be called as permutations of them. Okay. So, <clears throat> so our observation is that n choose k is n factorial by n minus k factorial because by definition, whatever n minus k factorial is 1, 2, etc. up to n minus k their product. And uh, n factorial it is 1, 2, etc. n. But you know, in the npk, we have only n into n minus 1, etc. n minus k plus 1. So the 1 to n minus k is missing, so that I can just divide right from the whole product. So therefore, uh, npk is n factorial by n minus k factorial. Okay, yet another example. I think we are looking at many, many examples. So what we have here? So I have uh, two rooms. Okay. So one room uh, has M people standing inside that room. And, and the next room has N person standing there. Okay. <clears throat> now, I ask the question, how many different ways are there for me to ask the people in the first room to queue up and also at the same time in the second room to queue up, right? So I want the persons in the first room to queue up and at the same time I want the persons in the second room also to queue up. How many ways we can do? So we already saw that if you have m persons and you want to queue them up, then I can do this in m factorial possible ways, right? m factorial ways I can do this. In the second room, there are n people, so I can permute them in any of the n factorial ways to queue them up. But this too I can do independently because you know the persons in the first room are queued up and the persons in the queue, uh, second room are queued up separately. So therefore, there is m factorial into n factorial ways. So the total number of ways to queue up them separately is m factorial into n factorial. Now comes the question, what happens if m is equal to 0? If m is equal to 0, I can still arrange the persons in the second room to queue up in n factorial ways, right? So when I say that people in the first room to be queued up, queued up in whatever ways they can, and the second room to be queued up in whatever ways they can, you know, I still want the answer that, uh, you know, the n factorial guys who are going to be permitted in the second room are all possible different arrangements for them, right? So I want m factorial times n factorial to be the answer for this, but then I want to get n factorial as the answer because that is the number of ways to arrange the people in the second row. So therefore, m factorial in the first case, when m is equal to 0, must be 1, right? Because otherwise 1 into n factorial, I mean, you know, 0 into n factorial will not be n factorial, right? I want n factorial into something to be n factorial itself. So therefore, m factorial in that case must be also 1. So therefore, we justify the reason we use 0 factorial is equal to 1. Okay. So, you know, the factorial we define by taking product from starting from the number minus 1, minus 1, etc. until we reach 1, right, for the integer, positive integer. On the other hand, when it is equal to 0, what is the number? So we can justify using it to be 1. In fact, there will be several other occasions we will see that why it is required the, to define it this way. But uh, now we you have at least some reason to see why. Okay. Now here is a question. Uh, 
a manufacturer uses let us say serial numbers of the following form right so every product that he makes he puts some serial number right maybe using for warranty purposes etc now two uh, uppercase letters followed by five digits and uh, then they are followed by the letters capital m and g or capital m and k then uh, this can be followed by so mg and mk followed by again three digits and one uppercase letter okay so the serial number has 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 uh 13 letters or digits appearing in the uh in the form right now how many possible serial numbers he has at his disposal right so he, he makes these products you know every day maybe thousands of them now the question is that totally how many uh serial numbers he has at his hand right because after some time you know if it's a finite number so uh, you know after some time it might repeat so till then again you can do this right produce many many numbers of this form so this is very easy to compute uh i want you to uh, think about this and work it out yourself maybe that is a better way now <clears throat> another question count the odd numbers with the distinct digits between 1000 and 9999 this is a question i want to discuss uh, because of some uh, interesting facts but uh, before i discuss please uh, stop the video and uh, look at this uh, uh, question think about it and try to come up with your own answer and see whether it matches with uh, you know our uh, uh, computation okay so how are you going to uh, count this so here is uh, how i am going to do it okay so i know that i am looking at uh, odd numbers with the distinct digits between 1000 and 999 so i know that all these numbers has exactly four digits so I have four possible. Uh, this is the wrong tool again. Uh, yes, it has exactly four digits, right? Now, since I know that the number is odd, I know that the last digit is going to be uh, either. Uh, one three five or seven right or, or nine of course yeah so the last digit has the possibilities one three five seven or nine so there are five possible choices for the last digit right one three five seven nine right now <coughs> the first digit what is the choice i have for the first digit the first digit cannot be zero right it cannot be zero now it cannot be the digit i chose for the last digit because it needs distinct digits so therefore I have eight possibilities here right so other than the first one i chose i can choose any of the remaining eight right so i have one to nine out of this nine i cannot choose the one i chose for the uh, uh, position here so therefore i have remaining eight choices now to select the second digit how many ways i can second digit can be any of the zero to uh, nine the ten digits but i cannot have the first digit as well as the last digit right so therefore eight choices are there for this and then for the third digit 
i cannot use the first digit the second digit and the last digit right so therefore out of the 10 i have seven choices here so now i say that okay there is 8 into 8 into 7 into 5 right 8 into 8 into 7 into 5 possible uh, numbers with this property now <clears throat> you might have noticed that i counted it in a very special order right like I, I i counted the numbers for the last digit first then i counted the numbers for the first digit then i counted for the second and third digits now question is that can we do it in you know another order and of course you may be able to do it in another order but again you have to be very very careful suppose we did in the other order okay suppose we started with the uh order that as follows right so i start with let us saying that okay i am going to look at four digit numbers i have these four possible positions the first position can be any of the numbers one to nine because it cannot be zero so i have nine choices here right then the second position it can be zero right but it cannot be uh, i mean it cannot be the the number that i chose the first so there is uh, again nine choices for this and for the third position i have uh, uh, you know how to avoid these two guys so therefore i have eight choices here now when it comes to the last position what you will say right so you have to say that okay i have the possible numbers like one to five or you know one one three five etc uh, nine and out of this i want to avoid the numbers that has appeared before but the the trouble is that we don't know whether how many odd numbers appeared here or how many even numbers appeared here right i mean if you know the first two digits were no, 1 and 7 then i cannot use 1 and 7 here right but on the other hand you know uh, if it was like 2 4 and 6 that we are using then i can use any of the five numbers so i don't know exactly how many possibilities i have for the last choice this is because the number of available decisions is not independent of the previous decisions right so we need to keep the independence and for that we might have to choose a particular order of computation so we we computed in this order right we started with the, the last position then we said that okay so i already chose the most restricted one right right it must be odd and then i went to the second position right i the first uh, first position here because it cannot be zero right and uh, I, it must be distinct from this and then again i know that you know all the things are available or possible here but except for the two which are used here so i can can freely choose so processing in a different order may not give the independence always so therefore we have to be careful in deciding which order we are going to choose so that the choices right at the time we make are independent of the previous i mean the number of choices are independent of the previous choice okay We are looking at anagrams. So, uh, anagrams are basically permutations, or basically words. So, given a word, you can permute, uh, you know, the letters of the word in whichever way you want, then to find out different other words, right? They don't, need not make any sense, but they can be, uh, you know, just words, you know, not a word in the particular language but they are words made, uh, made from basically strings made from uh, permuting the letters so how many words can be obtained by permuting the letters of the word 
L-O-C-K, lock. Okay. This is easy because uh, as we uh, have already seen, we have four uh, letters here, L, O, C, and K, and we are allowed to use only these four letters. The four letters can be ordered in any of the po possible ways, right? So we are looking at permutations, right, for anagrams. So there are four different letters, and how many permutations are there? Four factorial, right? N factorial permutations. We already saw that. So we can immediately say that, okay, there are four factorial, which is equal to 24 different ways we can make. So maybe as an exercise, try to write down the 24 different permutations of LOCK and make sure that there are exactly 24 of them. Okay. Now I ask, okay, what about LOOK, right, instead of LOCK? Can you use the same argument? Or why cannot you use the, uh, why we cannot use the product rule to find out the same thing, right? So we, so how do we use product rule here? Well, out of LOCK, the first position can have all the four possible choices, right? The second position, once you chose the first one, cannot be used in the second. So therefore, I have three choices, then two choices and one choice. So why it cannot be used to solve this in this case, right? L O O K. So think about this. Okay, think about this and find out why we cannot use this and why we could use uh, in the previous thing. Okay, so we will uh, uh, stop this lecture at this time, and then continue the next lecture. Okay.